Hi guys, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I want to show you is um, a belly band. The fellas here had a belly band here and they wanted to remove it. I had told him, well if you remove it, because he was talking about cutting it, and I said if you remove it, wood ex will be exposed. But if you take it out, then you're going to have a can of worms in here, meaning you should take the whole wall out. Of course, nobody wants to do that. When I tell people that, they give me the worst looks. So anyhow, he removed the belly band, which is embedded in the stucco. It always is. Uh, what we have here are a couple different things. We have the top piece that is a whole inch different from the bottom. So I didn't even encounter this till just now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the best we can since uh, they don't want to tear the whole wall off. And there's a piece of metal right here. Then there's studs here. This is a stud house. That's why it's so difficult to break it out properly. If it was solid shear wall, we could break it out right here and actually get a better bite. But it's under a huge eave. So what we're prepared to do is we're going to fish this paper under here. And another thing too, guys, is uh, uh, I, a fella says, well, gee, can't we just caulk this? You can put, say, like a really good caulking, like this uh, polyurethane caulking. You can go a whole tube right in here and just fish it in there, and that that works real well. But anytime you have an opportunity where you have a lip of something, and this time we do have a lip of that metal, it's better to use the lip and just kind of fish your way in it, and then do the caulking. Uh, so we're fishing it in there, and had I not marked these studs, I wouldn't be able to find them. So what I'm doing is I'm fishing this in here, fishing it in there. Now, that actually didn't take me too long to do. Once I took my hammer and I put it under here and lifted the whole wall to get under this metal right here. See that? Okay. That being said, that being done, now we take our utility knife and cut it here. We just kind of look at the bottom and cut it out. And once it's out, now we're going to do the old caulking. I'm going to pretend like this paper's not even here because you can never use enough waterproof membrane. Okay, here's a whole tube of caulking. Let's fuse this whole thing together, meaning underneath this flashing where our paper is, we're going to fuse it together. And this polyurethane caulking is a real drag to work with because it's not water cleanup, but it does the job. It's so powerful as far as the caulking, it fuses the paper to whatever we want it to. In this case, the stucco. Heck, I put two bricks together with three drops as an experiment years ago and couldn't even get them apart. This is great stuff. And again, there's almost a whole tube. It doesn't hurt to use a lot. We want this as watertight as you can get it. I mean, it's, we have, a, again, a huge eave, and the folks here are aware that Old Kirk recommends taking it all off, but most of the time I tell people that they give me the dirtiest looks and say, oh, we are not planning on taking all this off. Okay, whole tube of caulk in there. Then we just uh, got a little bit of mesh and you can use, there's 20 different wires you could use. The idea is just to get it in there, fish it in there, tap it in there, and that's going to be our uh, mesh for the stucco. We got to have some kind of a wire to make the, the stucco adhere. Okay, now this, you just tap it in there, tap it in there, and this wire will cut you like a razor. So you got to be real careful with it. In fact, I'm usually wearing gloves when I'm doing this goofy stuff. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to apply a bonding agent. Why are we going to apply a bonding agent? Well, because I've got to feather this in to make it right. So I'm using a, a bonding agent here, and I'm going way above this because I'm going to have to do a little bit of feathering in here. Okay, now below is really what's going to take the ability to feather a wall in because if I just cut it here to here, we are a half inch difference here, which is typical because usually a fella comes out, they put that belly band in it, and if I'm a plaster from a union shop or just any, anybody, it uh, doesn't have to be a union shop, but 
if I'm working for somebody, this is done, it's plastered, and then the next guy above it, he just does his thing. Even if it's the same guy, it's pretty common. Anyhow, uh, Jay's gonna mix me up some cement, and I'll show you how we feather this guy in. Okay guys, Jay mixed me up some hot mud. It's got accelerators in it, meaning as soon as we put it on, he's got it to where I've got five minutes to use it, which five minutes is all I need. So, and you remember earlier when I said this wall, it's, it's, it's got a half inch, so I'm going to feather in a little bit. This wouldn't adhere to just regular paint, so that's why I have to use the bonding agent. We'll come in here, one more little scoop out of this bucket here, and this is really hot mud, just how I wanted it. Okay. That goes on there. We have to feather down a certain, for a certain way. Okay, that's there. That's about right. In 10 minutes, this is gonna be pretty hard, guys. And then what I can do is float it, hard rubber float it and float it into this. And then it's just a matter of using our skills to feather in this section to this section, which is about an inch difference. But when we get to that stage, we'll show you that too. Okay, guys, our uh, base coat is set up. And keep in mind, what I'm doing now is I'm hard rubber floating it. Uh, meaning I got to get this true and plumb, get all the rocks out. And here, where I, where I float it, if I get a grain of sand that's heavier than this, it'll, it'll drag. But once I got it to where I need it, and now this is called hard rubber floating and yes I use a hard rubber float not a cork float not a fiberglass float but hard rubber that's my choice of doing this and I feather everything in first then I'll come to a sponge float and I use these guys all day long I don't want too much water in here but what I want to do is feather it in just a little bit better just feather it in so that my skip trowel will be a little bit easier, a little tighter, because this makes it like tape and mud. You know how you go with tape and mud, there's nothing to it. There's no uh, aggregate or sand. What I'm trying to do is, is soften this up so when I place my texture over here that it, it won't show as much. See now my joint here is much softer and when the texture is done that appearance will make a difference. Grab my mud. Okay. This is color coat material because of the same material I have here. I can't use this to do the texture, otherwise it won't match. Okay, I always look at the fellow who did this. He's, he's right-handed like most of us are, and he's just going straight up. Uh, you could always tell where, if he's going up or down by, if he's going down, the pattern will be fullest on the top. If he's going up, the pattern will be fullest on the bottom. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, now it's just a matter of feathering it in. We come here. We stagger our joints. Stagger those guys. Just like that. Take it sideways. A little bit here. There we go. And somebody might say, man, that wall ain't true and plumb. And I would say, you're right, it's not true and plumb. Take a rod, a stick, two by four, and you put it on there. Pretty damn close though, pretty close. Closer than I thought it was, it's on the money. Uh, anyhow, that's how you do this, guys. And then you just let, after you get your trial, your uh, skip trial on it, you look at what they got, and then you kind of just match that, just like that. So, anyway, guys, if you're gonna pull off a belly band, the most important thing is, how are you gonna watertight that guy? If you mess up on the texture, that's not a big deal, but if it leaks, that is a big deal. Anyhow, guys, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastery, my son Jason on the camera as usual. We thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next fix.